So this video is going to be about Duet Generation 2 and Duet Generation 3 and it's really aimed at people who maybe don't know which one to buy or maybe you already have Generation 2 and you want to upgrade to Generation 3 or you're thinking about it and you maybe don't know which boards to buy and so forth. The videos I've made today have uh, just been me showing off to be honest. Um, so I'm hoping this one will be informative and people will get something out of it. Um, if you do, hit the subscribe button, that would be quite good. I, Duet guys, are, everything's open source, they're quite good, the website's quite good. Um, all the specs are there listed, you can read about the specs and kind of make a decision. But um, there are a few quirks and foibles and gotchas and one or two other little things that you probably won't find elsewhere um, and there are ways around some of those gotchas and foibles and things which I've done so again that might be helpful and useful to you um, let's get on with it um, I've actually got 13 stepper motors, I've only got one for the x-axis, uh, single motor driving three screws. Um, then I've got X, Y, U, V, A and B, that's another six, so that's seven altogether. And then six extruders, 13 motors. Um, Duet 2, I had a Duet 2 Ethernet board and the Duet 5 expansion board, which is the maximum of 10. You can run another two external drivers via an, uh, the expansion header um, but that gets complicated and I never did that. So for this machine 13 motors you have to go to Duet 3. Um, but there's another reason why I wanted to go to Duet 3 and that is on the Duet 2 the Duet 5 expansion board has to be uh, very very close to the Duet main board um, about 100 mil I think is the maximum which means that all the wires for everything all the motors the sensors the heaters the fans pretty much go back to a central point so on my upper gantry where the extruders go on top of there effectively I had a huge cable chain with about 40 conductors inside it to feed those, all those extruders, the heaters, the fans, the temperature sensor and everything. But Duet 3 works a bit differently. The expansion boards are connected to the main board via CAN bus, which means the expansion boards can go kind of anywhere. Um, there's probably a finite limit on the length of the cable but to all intents and purposes anywhere and you only need to supply power and data to the expansion boards in theory so um, it vastly simplified the wiring for me but <laughs> but <laughs> there are some foibles. Um, but before we get to that, let's just talk about what I've now got on my machine. At the back there is the main board, which has six stepper drivers and oh, there's something like 24, 26 additional inputs or outputs for things like fans and and um, temperature sensors, heaters, um, even a laser, LEDs and goodness knows what else. Uh, so lots of, uh, lots of capability on that. So I have two expansion boards here that actually ride on the gantry. Um, so each expansion board comes with uh, three stepper drivers because I've got six extruder motors I need six stepper drivers so I have to have two expansion boards 
two expansion boards gives me another stick so I still need another driver so I have a third expansion board it's there around where my hand is there the other thing you might or might not have noticed is that which is there you go a Raspberry Pi but as you can see the Raspberry Pi isn't even connected so the Raspberry Pi when they first announced that they were going to do um, the generation 3 um, the Duet guys said that they were going to use a single ball computer to run the web interface basically the how you control the printer um, which frees up the main um, CPU for just running the printer which sounded okay fair enough um, so I bought a Raspberry Pi thinking that's what I was going to have to do in the event when they made the first prototypes and even the production boards um, they put an Ethernet connector on the main board so it can run standalone um, that's how I've been running my printer ever since and I keep an eye on the forum and so forth um, and if I'm honest I've never seen never yet seen a use for the Raspberry Pi or a single board computer um, it runs the web interface you can run it standalone mode they're most likely at some point in the future but bear in mind that it's been out for a year now um, will be some add-ons or some extra functionality that you can do with a Raspberry Pi if you want Wi-Fi you probably have to have the Pi because the main board is Ethernet only so if you've got a um, a normal printer and you've only got three motors or if you've got up to ten motors um, Duet 2 is fine go with that um, I believe they're going to add functionality so you can add a single ball computer to it if you feel that need to do that um, it will be the mainstream product I believe um, and there's the Wi-Fi version or there's the Ethernet version but if you want to run more than 10 or 12 motors or if you want to run high current motors more than about 2.4 amps um, then Duet 3 is the way to go probably or if you want to simplify the wiring by having expansion boards close to the motors um, is another option which was one of the reasons why I went for generation 3 however as you can see the expansion boards are pretty huge there we go so I, I just have one heater uh, one cooling fan and one set of part fans uh, and one temperature sensor um, but I have six extruders so I need six stepper drivers each expansion board comes with three stepper drivers but there are something like an additional 18 um, in and out connectors for heaters and fans and goodness knows what else <clears throat> um, and of course I've got those two boards so I've got 36 connectors and I'm using about five or six of them um, and then of course there are another 18 IO connectors on the third board which just has the X, Y and Z motors on it on top of the 20 odd IO connectors that are on the main board so what I'm saying is if you want additional stepper drivers you get the expansion board but it gives you a lot of extra input and output connectors as well 
In my case, I've got 54 additional expansion or in and out connectors for fans, heaters, semesters, whatever, in addition to the 20 odd that are already on the main board. And because of all these extra I.O. connectors, then the expansion boards are a lot bigger than I had hoped they were going to be. They're about 100 mil square. There is another option. Um, and in fairness to the Duet guys, they are bringing out more boards as and when. They've recently announced a tool board, which has one stepper driver but it has about another half a dozen connectors for heaters, fans, etc. Um, <clears throat> and in my situation I would need six of those. Um, and a tool board itself has one CAN connector, it doesn't have CAN in and out. So I would need two CAN expansion boards to connect the six tool boards. And I would have six times six equals 36 spare connectors, which I would only use a, a few of. So I would have preferred it if they had just stepper driver expansion boards and I.O. expansion boards. And then the whole thing could have been a lot smaller and more compact. But that's what it is. That's what you get if you want. If you want more steppers, you get all these extra I.O. connectors, which take up space. So I've said that one of the advantages of three is that you can put expansion boards in other places away from the main board, which could tidy up the wiring. Um, but there are, and all everything I've said so far is documented. You can find it. All the specs are there. I haven't said anything that you couldn't otherwise find it. Um, and that applies to what I'm about to say, but this is a bit hidden. It's a bit of a gotcha, or could be. Uh, it's the limitations. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you can position the expansion board where you think you might want to be able to. Um, I'm going to read from the official documentation. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Rep firmware for Duet 3 currently has the following limitations as of firmware 3.1.1, which is what we're on now. So when it first came out, it was on version 3. That was about a year ago, we're on 3.1. Most of these are temporary, a few may be permanent. So, end stop switches and Z probes connected to the main board cannot control motors on expansion boards. Plan to be fixed in release 3.3. If you use a Z probe, then the Z motors must be connected to the main board. This is planned to be fixed in 3.3. Heater tuning is not yet supported on expansion or tool boards. Support is planned in release 3.3. That one has been a real pain to me because I've been working on this experimental hot end. Um, I can't tune a heater when it's connected to an expansion board. What I've done is made the heater wiring overly long so I can um, push the gantries right to the back, pull the plug out of the heater, connect it into the main board, run the PID tuning and then I have to redo the configuration obviously. Uh, do the, do it like that and then plug the heater back into the expansion board and then put the configuration back to what it was. I mean it's not something that you would normally do very often um, but it is for me because I'm working on an experimental hot end. Um, anyway I digress. Um, a heater on an expansion board or tool board can only be controlled by a temperature sensor on the same expansion board doesn't say that's going to be fixed. A thermostat that you control fan on an expansion board can only be controlled by a temperature sensor on the same expansion board again. doesn't say that's ever going to be fixed. <clears throat> Z probes connected to an expansion board or tool boards are limited to type 8 and 9. 
no date on if that might ever change so I assume that's fixed. Filament monitors for extruders driven by expansion boards and tool boards are not yet fully supported. Support is planned in release 3.3. Filament monitor will need to be connected to the board driving the corresponding driver. DHT temperature humidity sensors connected to expansion boards are not supported. Stalls of expansion board motors are not yet reported and cannot be used for homing. Overheat warnings from stepper drivers on expansion boards are not proactively reported but can be queried using M122. Software reset data is not available for expansion boards. This is planned for release 3.3. So you need to be aware of those limitations. Um, obviously if you're about to build a printer um, at some time in the future from when this video was made check that list I'll put a link in the description so you can see um, whether that's still a limitation or not so you need to bear those things in mind if you're planning on building a printer that requires expansion boards and you're wondering or you planned on putting an expansion board in a certain place you may not be able to because of those limitations when it first came out it was version 3 um, we're currently on 3.1.1 .1. I believe version 3.2 is being worked on so those things on the list of limitations which are going to be implemented in 3.3 I have no idea when that might be the next little gotcha um, which mm, probably won't affect you it might I'll need to mention it uh, is motor currents if you are going generation 3 because you need more than I think it's 2.4 amps or something like that on generation 2 um, generation 3 says it will go up to 6 and something 6.5 or something amps um, yeah but <laughs> there's a bit of a gotcha oh there is for me there's a gotcha um, this gantry that holds the extruders that one is a lot heavier than the hot end and so I run bigger motors NEMA 23's so I wanted to use bigger motors just on that axis because it's big and heavy I didn't want to change all the motors and I asked the question on the forum uh, at the time and uh, I was told of a way of doing it um, basically if you map the motor to an axis an axis so take that motor as an example if it's mapped to the V axis then I can set the motor current high for that motor and then I can remap it back to the x-axis and it will retain the motor current that's what I was told, that's what I did, that's what I thought was honky dory but it's not clear cut um, <clears throat> in fact it don't work <laughs> apparently now I've subsequently been told um, if the printer's idle for a period of time idle hold will kick in the motor current will drop down um, just stop them overheating if they don't go around or something like that um, when that kicks in it overrides the current that was mapped when the motor was mapped to a different axis the other thing I do is um, I reduce the motor currents for homing um, just in case something goes wrong um, because when you've got three kilograms and you're throwing it away with a around with a high torque motor when it slams into the frame it can do some serious damage so I like to reduce the motor current so if it slams in the frame it'll just stall the motor without breaking anything 
if you use if you reduce the amount of current then the current reverts to being set for the latest mapping which was for it to be mapped to the x-axis in my case so and now the um, documentation has changed to say that if you run multiple motors on the same axis they have to be the same current rating um, so I have different gantries which have different masses and I wanted to run big current motor on the big mass but I can't because um, it also because they move in sync so they're effectively mapped to the same axis um, I've got two choices I can keep I have to run at reduced speed because 1800 milliamps isn't enough to accelerate three kilograms at the speed that I want to run it at so I have to slow it down um, the alternative would be to change all the other motors for big NEMA 23s um, and then I could up the motor current <clears throat> so something to be aware of um, the spec says 6.4 amps but that only applies if all the motors that are on an axis are identical um, if you've got something crazy like mine it is pretty crazy I admit um, and you want to run different currents then you can't um, it's something to be aware of that's all I'm saying but obviously if you only have one motor per axis then it's not a problem you can set different currents you can set the current per axis you can't set it per motor or per driver that's the um, that's the new limit the next thing um, that bothers me um, is speed because I don't know what the maximum step pulse frequency is on generation 3 or firmware 3 whichever it is I know it was reduced for some reason um, from the older firmware and generation 2 that was using um, and I know that it has been improved but I can't find out what it is nobody will tell me uh, I've asked the question multiple times and nobody answers it's only kind of an issue if you run high micro stepping uh, at high speed when you start to mix filament um, some of the inputs could be running at single digit percentages of the overall extrusion amount if the total extrusion amount is say 0.2 millimeters then one filament might need to use say 1% of 0.2 millimeters um, and you can get in the situation where one micro step at 16 or at 1 16th of a full step won't give you that amount of movement um, you, you'll get nothing um, and there's a question whether maybe the bit that doesn't move gets carried over and then all of a sudden it will make up the fractions um, I don't know anyway I, I did some work on it and I would like ideally to run 128 times micro stepping on my extruders to get the necessary resolution they're geared extruders um, so geared 3 to 1 normally 400 steps at 16 times um, but I can't run 128 times micro stepping because retractions happen at a lot faster speed than normal extruder moves when you're printing um, and so that's the situation where you run at 
high-ish speed when you do a retraction it's not terribly high but if you got 400 steps of milk that's 16 times and you then change that to 128 times micro stepping that's an awful lot of micro steps per mil um, and so if the step pulse frequency is too low it won't do it so I can't run high micro stepping on my extruders which I would like to be able to do um, I can't even run them as high as I could on generation 2 because the step pulse frequency is something less than it was um, most users it ain't going to be a problem you're not going to notice it um, but in my case because I use mixing hot ends and stuff then I do um, it's I, I don't know the reason for it um, the spec says it's a more powerful processor so you would think if you just look at the spec that the step pulse frequency is going to be higher but it ain't so maybe that will improve in time maybe the firmware will be whatever is in the firmware that limits it I, I have no idea why it's um why it's been throttled effectively um but uh maybe they'll find a, a a firmware fix for it or something but it's um i don't know because they won't tell me what the step pulse frequency is uh, i have no idea or whether it's different on expansion boards than the main board or quite what the issue is there um yeah most users aren't gonna notice so it's probably adequate for most users so it might not um it's probably low low priority i would say um so on a similar note um i run um one mil lead lead screws or i did um so my steps per mil for my z axis was something like 3200 i think something like that um <clears throat> and after i changed from duet 2 to duet 3 i couldn't drive the z axis as fast as i used to be able to so i suspect it might be related to the step pulse frequency being limited um one way of telling on generation 2 was to do a report and look at hiccups and hiccups will tell you if you're exceeding the step pulse limit basically but hiccups aren't reported on expansion boards and my z motor is on the expansion board so i don't know um anyway to get around it i um change the lead screws um basically went from one mil lead to two mil lead um so i got half the number i got 1600 steps a mil instead of 3200 so i can drive them twice as fast and most people it's probably not a problem because z axis speed isn't usually an issue um when you're printing you're only moving 0.3 of a mil at a time or 0.2 or whatever the layer height is and most people only have a z travel of a couple hundred mil something like that but i've got nearly 800 mil so if i run that at 300 mil a minute it takes nearly three minutes if i've done a print that was went to z max pretty much it takes more or less three minutes just to hone the z axis at that speed that's why i like to move it faster not for hope not for printing or anything but just for that homing move so i um being a mechanical engineer i did another mechanical fix as well as change the screws um i um i had another little problem once i did that and I don't know, this, this is a firmware bug, I'm 99% sure, because I posted the question on the forum and nobody's got an answer to it. But when I managed to get the speed up from 300 to 600, at 600 mil a minute, um, it wouldn't recognise my Z-axis homing switch. It didn't trigger, it, well the switch triggered but the firmware didn't recognize that it had triggered 
but it will work consistently at 300 mil a minute and it will never uh, see that it's triggered if I go at 600 mil a minute um, nobody knows why because it's not it's not just that the switch is on the expansion board because to the X and the V are also on the expansion board and they home at 1200 millimeters a minute and the firmware coats with that just fine but it can't run 600 on the Z axis so again mechanical engineers head had to uh, find a fix um, this is what I did so here's my little workaround for um, for this uh, Z switch not being um, recognized when the homing speed was uh, more than about 300 mil a minute um, I made an arm just a swing an arm with a micro switch on it um, so when the bed makes contact with the switch it will make contact but then the bed can carry on moving and the arm just pivots against the spring I just digress a little bit um, because if you've got Duet 2 you can run either Firmware 2 or Firmware 3 um, there's a lot of changes to be made if you want to go from 2 to 3 um, but it's probably worth it for one thing um, and that is conditional g-code which means you can write little macros and things that do um, things like if then else if something is in a certain state then do this else do something different or uh, loops such as while something is in a certain state do something and it will repeat um, so that's what I did with my swinging arm arrangement uh, basically written a macro that looks at the state of that switch um, and if it hasn't been triggered then it will move the bed up a hundred mil at a high speed uh, and then it will look at the switch again and if it's still not triggered it will do another 100 mil um, so I put that at the start of my homing file so then if the bed is near the bottom or a long way away from the high end that macro will run and it will move the bed up at high speed until it gets reasonably close to the to the to the uh, nozzle to the hot end and then it will do the rest of the homing at 300 milliseconds so it will see the switch uh, one thing about the Pi that um, you probably won't find documented anywhere um, the, the way it works on the duet is that um, if you're running standalone mode then you have an SD card um, which is actually on the board itself when you're running the Raspberry Pi or some other single board computer then the SD card goes in the Pi and what that means is when you if you're in standalone mode and you turn the printer on it reads the contents of the configuration file into the board and in standalone mode that's almost instant it's like a second or something like that to do if you're running with a single board computer then the SD card goes into that rather than in the main board which means that when you first turn the printer on the f first thing it does it has to boot up the single board computer which takes a while and um, after it's done that then it reads in the contents of the SD card and then the printer's ready to go I'm told that takes around 20 to 30 seconds um, probably not a big deal for most of you bit of a pain for me because I would I'm use macros and all my g-code files call those macros so essentially if I want to print something I can just turn the printer on 
select the file I want to print and hit go and it will print straight away well it has to go through the warming everything up and all that but that's how it works um, so to stand there and wait for 20-30 seconds before I can even pick a file to print is a bit I don't like it <laughs> um, but yeah it's, it's a minor kind of niggle um, most people will probably have a laptop or something like that so they'll probably turn the machine on turn the laptop on it takes a while for the laptop to boot it's not a problem um, but there is one situation where this boot up time could be problematic and that is um, something goes amiss with a print something goes a bit haywire I hit this big red button and it just cuts all power um, so I might be in a situation where for whatever reason a print has failed um, I've got a lot of spaghetti on the bed I hit the button um, then I see what the problem is uh, I'm okay well I've lost the print but uh, what's happening now is that I have a hot end that's got hot and because I've cut the power and cooling fans aren't blowing air over the heat break anymore which means that any plastic in the hot end is rapidly going to warm up deform and then cool cause a blockage um, <clears throat> so in that sort of situation um, I could hit the big button that's lost the print I can sort I, I can see what the problem is so I can restore power and it'll start the fans up straight away in standalone mode but when one is running the Raspberry Pi that won't happen because it's got to boot the Pi before it can boot the duet board so you could be sitting there 20 30 seconds with a hot end no fans on it um, so one way to mitigate that might be to wire your heat break cooling solution whether that be fans or a water pump wire that directly to the power rather than have it controlled while you do it you lose thermostatic control over it and it would run whenever the printer's on but it would get around this problem that if you if you kill power uh, then restore power you get your cooling solution back straight away so to use the pi um, or any single board computer you obviously need to gonna be reasonably familiar with it um, which most of these things seem to run linux or linux i don't even know how to pronounce that um, so you're going to need to learn a bunch of commands um, even to kind of install it or get it connected um, I think that process is becoming easier um, and it will likely get easier still in the future but to get the best out of the Pi if, if it's something that interests you, um, you you're going to need to be familiar with it and probably some sort of coding language like python or something so that you can write your own applications or scripts or get the thing to do whatever it is you might want to do with it so um i guess in summary um if the the duet 2 is the mainstream product and it will do for 90 odd percent of users easily if you've got a fairly complicated machine or you want to tidy up the wiring or run bigger motors then duet 3 might be the better option but if you want to run bigger motor currents make sure that the motors are all on individual axes and not on the same axis and if you want to tidy up the wiring then be aware of the limitations about motors and switches and the various combinations thereof and um, if you can put your hot end heater on the main board at least until version 3.3 .3 comes out it'll save you having to extend the wiring every time you want to do a heater tune 
a few little foibles, a few little workarounds, um, some information that you may not come across elsewhere. Um, let me know if you've found it interesting. Um, let me know if you haven't found it interesting. Uh, I can see it's the easiest thing in the world to delete a video. Um, so, bye for now.